was dramatic. Dak says, all right, here we go. Fourth quarter, second and five. I'm going to take you guys. Finds his man, Amari Cooper. They get into field goal, and then tick, tick, tick. The, the clock goes all the way down. They're waiting right. here. And then, what? Zerline, after a question mark full game from the special teams, hits a 57-yarder. They win. 57-yarder, they win. And Jerry's like, all right, that was weird, but we won. So many yards, so few points. Like, one of the weirdest games of the afternoon. And yet, Cowboys fans can exhale. Ezekiel Elliott had 71 yards, but Tony Pollard had 109. Let's hear from the other Cowboys running back. Our very own Taylor Bashotti caught up with Tony Pollard after the win at SoFi. You guys were very close against the Bucks last week. Describe what it was like to be in the fourth quarter and actually get the win with a kick this week. Um, it's big, you know, um, just like last week. You know, we had a, a similar situation with last game and we weren't able to come out with the W, but, you know, this week we were able to pull it out. And, uh, you know, it's just big for the offense, you know, getting that confidence, you know, especially with that, that two-minute drive and just going down, putting points on the board and, and getting that game winner. <laughs> Kyle, this is for you. Okay. Big Ben trying to open up 2-0 for the season, right, in front of the home fans. T.J. White got hurt in the second quarter trying to rush the passer. Wouldn't return to the game. He got that money. He was holding that money on his left side. That's why he started limping, popped the scoring on, on his right like side. That, that bag, bro. Let's go to the third quarter. Derek Carr. <laughs> Coming off an of NFL high, 435 yards in week number one. Eyeball in the defense. Ah, yes, nice toss to the back of the end zone. But more importantly, on this toss, he's down on the play. But he's a gunslinger. He's on the sideline trying to work it out. Briefly goes into the medical tent. Kyle, let's skip to the fourth quarter. All right. Big Ben slings it down the field. Oh. Notre Dame fans, Chase Claypool is able to reel it in. They need a few more of these plays. They do. Raiders had some. Yeah, I mean, Claypool finished with three for 70 yards. Three plays later, third and 10. Najee! Big Ben finds a friend of the show, Najee Davenport. Hey, Najee Harris. Harris. I wish it was Najee Davenport. Harris. I keep calling him Najee Davenport he was on the because Steelers. he played with the Steelers. I get it, and yeah. he plays like him, too. Great running back. Yeah. Touchdown, Steelers trail, 16-14. Let's go with Carr at the end of the game. Really? Late, <laughs> third and 10. Against it Steelers. takes guts. He drops it on him. 61 yards. Henry Ruggs, the second. That's why they drafted him. Let's take another look. Ruggs is clocked at 21.42 miles per hour. That's his top speed of his career since coming out of Alabama. He got a little love on Twitter from Dame Dollar. Yeah, he was everywhere yesterday. Let's go. Raiders, 2-0, 26-17. Let's hear from Gruden. Yeah. What do you got to say, Coach? Chucky. I'll just let his performance speak for itself. I've been, I've been clamoring about Derek Carr since I've been here. So, hopefully, he gets some recognition for doing what he did today. You know, he had some long drives. He was uh, big again at the end of the game against two great defenses two weeks in a row, and it's a big reason why we've been able to win. To see this Raiders passing game put up those kinds of plays and numbers against that Steelers defense was one of the craziest things I saw yesterday. And against the Ravens, uh, of course, week one, huge, huge win. So as far as contenders in the AFC are the undefeated 2-0 mm. Las Vegas mm -hmm. Raiders for real, Peter. Hard to say no. They put up huge mm -hmm. numbers on offense, and they've just beaten two really good opponents. And this one, after traveling across the country on a Monday night, but – it's all about Derek Carr for me. I, I, I love what I'm hearing from this guy. He's wearing his heart on a sleeve. All right, let's watch the Foster Moreau touchdown pass, which mm -hmm. was a great play, and then the injury, but here it is. So we don't get the shot of how hard he gets hit here. We don't know what happens. Moreau gets a mm -hmm. touchdown. Then we see Carr, he's injured, and then now we get this look, and we're like, all right, what happened? That's, that could be bad. That could be bad. And yet he got up and played it. Can we hear what Derek Carr had to say about this very yeah. moment? Check out Derek Carr's vulnerability and self-awareness here. First thing I asked is, did he catch it? And then no one answered me. I was like, did he freaking catch it? You know, they're like, yeah, he caught it. And I was like, all right, well then, get me up. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, you know, Carrier came over, and a lot of my teammates. It was an amazing moment. Um, you know, I try, I try to be someone who gives so much. You know, and in that moment, they all came over and they all started like praying for me. 
And it was just this beautiful moment of my teammates like looking out for me, you know, and that right there is family to me. I didn't, I didn't really, I love the touchdown, don't get me wrong, but that moment right there, I was like, man, I just want to win this game for this team, man. That, that's, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing that happened. I don't know. <laughs> Kyle, you got No, no, you please, please give us your comments. On a, on a Monday morning after the win, I'm going to just say Derek Carr did it again, put yeah. a few yards, and if we're taking everyone, there might be something in that locker room. There might be something that those guys love their quarterback, and he loves them back, and we've been through a lot of this with Derek Carr, and yeah. he knows it. And yet right now, this is two big wins. I'm going to enjoy this moment and not immediately roll my eyes and say, the Raiders are going to... They have done the job. Let's give them credit. You don't want to decide there. right now whether or not they're real. You're just enjoying it as it comes. An unbelievable I'm, I'm victory like yesterday. Yeah. That might have been the win of the day yesterday. And that guy right there is beloved by his teammates. And, Peter, that's important. It's important. Guys think, oh, I'm going to do my job anyway. But do I like him? Because a lot of guys in the NFL locker room, you don't like. You don't tell anybody about it, but you don't like him. And it becomes important that the guy that's touching the ball every snap offensively that you do love him. For me, the Raiders... There's always a style to the, the old nostalgic Raiders for me. And there's nothing prettier mm. in pro football than the deep pass. Mm. And the Raiders, they can only be Talk about a, a, a piece of the Raiders until they bring that back. And when they selected Henry Ruggs the second, that's what I thought, and that's what they were able to utilize. Not when you think they would. Mm -hmm. Most young teams in this situation, I'm going to throw a conservative pass. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check it down. I'm going to punt. I know I got the lead. Be conservative. No. John Gruden, he loves his quarterback. Why? Because the play he called. Third and ten, he gets the first-round draft pick. Now, I'm going to tell you, those picks that they got with the Raiders, I ain't in love with them. The last couple years, I ain't in love with the talent that they picked. Okay. But utilizing this talent, getting rubs involved in the deep passing game, that's the only way they win the AFC West if that guy plays like a first-round pick. The Ruggs touchdown looked a lot like the one they had against KC last year. Mm -hmm. Same thing that they did, same part of the field, same everything. I have the the little angel on my shoulder and the little devil on my shoulder. Like, They're talk both to me. talking. To what are they saying? Let's let's start with the angel. You know, one of the biggest trophies the Raiders got in this game. Chris, you'll love this. They got a little sensitive Roethlisberger after the game. Mm. Ben was not in a mood afterwards. Mm. Uh, he got hit 10 times. He got sacked a couple times. Uh, he was asked, why did you guys run so many three and four wide receiver sets? He said, ask the coordinator. He said, he's got to play Ben. Listen, Ben we know is an emotional guy. He did not have a great day. He got hit a lot. He was kind of pissed off and ornery. And that's because the Raiders brought it to him. We can run the rugs play all day, and we will. They hit him. They hit him a lot. And this is the biggest reason, I think, that, that Las Vegas won. Oh! It's a great hit. Here's the, here's, here's the devil. I'm sitting here on a Monday morning and listening to Jersey Schrager talk about the yeah. vulnerability and self-awareness yeah. of Derek Carr. Yep. All right? That's great. It's beautiful. We've seen a lot of Derek Carr September. over the years. He seems like a great guy. This was a great win. Take nothing away. We know they have one-punch power. They beat the Chiefs. Do you remember what happened after that? Would it not be a very John Gruden 10-year Raiders deal for them next week to go to Miami who just lost 35 to nothing and lose. And we're going, where's the vulnerability now? What I mean is this, I'm excited too. Great win, two great wins. The J John Gruden Raiders have not earned the right for us to believe in them. They have no equity. Mm -hmm. They have nothing that says, we got this, we're doing it. We know they've had big wins before. I cannot say, maybe they can win the West. I'm so impressed by their self-awareness, because I'm not sure they do. The last time they had a win like this, they did a victory lap around Arrowhead and a mm -hmm. bus and haven't heard from them in months. Don't blow it next week against Miami. I'm sorry. Maybe that makes me a jerk. I've been through this for a few years with the John Gruden Raiders. you got to earn a little me, bit. Me too. So at what point do we feel like they will have proven it? The consistency, the lack of the yeah. up here and crap to use their quarterback's words. Like, like what do they need? Like, December? No. Because like like, like, they might take December for someone like me where it's like, I, let's revisit this. This is cute right now. I know what you mean. Well, the problem, is, I wish they had a marquee Monday night game coming up. They, they already had it. They won the game. Yeah. They had it. Their next, their schedule is very and flat. And they beat the like team that we're crowning this morning. I know. It, it, it's awesome. Does yeah. this, is it going to be stay off? Awesome? Are you worried about Pittsburgh? No, Pittsburgh okay. still Sears Roebuck. The, the, All right. Uncle Sam, they'll get there. Um, we're not worried about Tampa either. Chris, I know we have a lot to say. We have a three-hour show. We'd love to get back to you. Uh, <laughs> no, we have to. We are beholden to Falcons Bucks. Tom Brady's never lost to the Falcons in his career. Started playing him on 05. He was handing off to Patrick Pass. And now he's throwing it to, oh, an old throwback. Rob Gronkowski, touchdown, 20-yard touchdown. Rob Gronkowski scoring a touchdown every five minutes here. It's amazing. Is this really happening? Yeah, this is happening. This is the year 2021, Chris. And look at that. 
Chris Godwin looks like number 80 from the Minnesota Vikings back in the day. 48 to who cares? The Buccaneers destroy the Falcons. Falcons are 0 2. Buccaneers, the Buccaneers are the best team in the league. Uh, Miami Buffalo, what a game we hyped and then just did not deliver, unless you're a Bills fan and you're enjoying this one. Tua early gets knocked out of the game. That is AJ Epineza who knocks him down. The yeah, ball. that's on your breakout players list. One of my breakout players. Epineza was all over the field yesterday. He was awesome. Tua injured. In comes Jacoby Brissett. But I don't know if Joe Montana was winning this game the way the oh, Bills worst came out. Today. Worst game of the day. 35 0 blowout. Uh, absolutely non competitive yet again. For whatever reason, Josh Allen just completely owns Brian Flores. 6 0 against the Dolphins. 6 0 against the Dolphins and 5 0 uh, against Flores. So 